Andy with the eyes to Jesus.blogspot.com and welcome as we continue on our study going through the whole book of Isaiah and God's Holy Word, the Bible. If you would like to follow along with me in the same Bible translation that I am using, I will be using the Young's Literal Translation. And uh, today we are up to Isaiah chapter 20. Isaiah chapter 20 is short. It is six verses. But uh, it's definitely got some interesting nuggets in there for us to take a look at. Now, recall, we've been kind of inside a subtopic. We're inside kind of a broad topic of the burden of this, the burden of that, the burden of these people, the burden of that people. But we've been kind of hanging out in the area of Ethiopia and Egypt for a while. And that is going to continue here in uh, chapter 20, but also transition into the Philistine people, the Philistines. Okay, so... We, let's get started. Chapter 20, verse 1 begins with, In the year of the coming in of Tartan to Ashdod, when Sargon, king of Ashur, sendeth him, and he fighteth against Ashdod and captureth it. So, during that time, during that year, okay, so Tartan, that uh, is like a title, like uh, similar to like uh, a chief general. Okay, and then Ashdod, that was a chief city of Philistine. Okay, so when Sargon, king of Ashur, Ashur is Assyria, sendeth him, and he fighteth against Ashdod, Phil in Philistine, and taketh it. And that is on the historical record. That did happen, just as it said it would happen. And that happened in 711 B.C., in the year 711 B.C. Okay, continuing on with verse 2, it says, At that time spake Jehovah by the hand of Isaiah, son of Amos, saying, Go, and thou hast loosed the sackcloth from off thy loins, and thy sandal thou dost draw from off thy foot. And he doeth so, going naked and barefoot. So barefoot, we understand that. He took off his sandals, his feet are bare, he's walking around with no shoes on his feet. But what does it mean here when it says naked? This literally does mean the word nude. But the word naked or nude, this word is used in two different ways in the scriptures. Uh, we have naked being used in the literal sense of nude when it talks about naked, I came from my mother's womb. But we also have naked used in more of a figurative sense where the person isn't literally nude, but they're down to just their arm undergarments or rags to uh, show extreme poverty uh, or hard times. And I believe that this is not fully nude here but more along the lines of the nakedness of extreme poverty, which means that there's still clothing on them, but there's not much clothing. They're, they're stripped of their outer garments. And we see that kind of fits here because it says, Go, and thou hast loosed the sackcloth from off thy loins. The sackcloth was the outer garment. And uh, so two things here. One, he removed his outer garment, so he only had his underclothes on. So the type of naked he was going around in was his underclothes. And then as you see here, it's going to be for three years, so those underclothes turn into rags, just underclothes rags hanging on him. Okay, so two things here that that demonstrates. One, we see that uh, by the removal of the sackcloth, it's like Isaiah is being told, okay, that's enough. Stop mourning for these people. They don't deserve your mourning. Now you're going to be an object lesson to them. So instead of mourning for them, you're going to take off your sackcloth, which is your garment of mourning and was your outer garment, and you're going to go around in just your underclothes for three years. They're going to turn to rags. And this is a picture or a type, an object lesson. And we also see these type of physical object lessons uh, given also in Ezekiel and Jeremiah. They give similar type of object lessons, okay? And it goes into this a little bit as we continue on. All right, so verse 3, And Jehovah saith, As my servant Isaiah hath gone naked and barefoot three years, a sign and a wonder for... Egypt and Cush. So that is for Egypt and Ethiopia. So it started off here talking about how Tartan was going to go to Ashdod, that that was of Philistines, that he was sent there by King Sargon of Ashur or Assyria. Okay, and now we're seeing that uh, 
the prophet Isaiah is commanded of God to go around in just his underclothing and no shoes for three years, and that this is a sign, a yuhu, to Egypt and to Cush, or Ethiopia. Continuing on with verse 4, it says, So doth the king of Ashur, that's Assyria, lead the captivity of Egypt and the removal of Cush, or Ethiopia, young and old, naked and barefoot, with seat uncovered, the nakedness of Egypt. Now, you could say, well, here it's mentioning seat uncovered. That means the buttocks bared. So if the buttocks are bared, does this mean that they are literally nude and that uh, Isaiah is literally nude? No, the seat uncovered or the buttocks bare, bared, both in Old and New Testament, indicated intense suffering, poverty, and shaming. Okay, so like for an example of this, um, Acts chapter 19, we read about the only place in the Bible that talks about an exorcism or exorcists, okay, and that uh, scripturally you cannot exorcise a demon or demons out of a person or out of people or out of a house. So much for the conjuring movies. That's not how it's done. Okay, so we had some exorcists who thought that they could exorcise out demons. You could think of uh, an Acts chapter 19 version of the conjuring. However, what happened there? The demons laughed at them. The demons beat them up. And the demons ripped up their clothing and bared their buttocks and threw them out of the house. They were a big joke. So... How do we cast out demons as a side note then? Because we can't exorcise them. There's the exorcisms are a joke. Any exorcism that supposedly worked, either worse because they stopped doing the exorcism ceremony and instead moved to the correct way, or it actually did not work. That was part of the trick of the demons, was to let people think that exorcisms work, because then people aren't going to cast out the demons with the only way that actually does work, and that is casting them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I have so far never have had the experience of having to cast a demon out of a person. I have had the experience of uh, encountering these demonic beings in locations and having to cast them out from those locations. Uh, you'll hear people, especially in the New Age community and the alien community, uh, they'll talk about uh, the shadow people, right? They, they are just shadowy, and it looks like they're wearing a hat and a trench coat. They almost look like a, a shadow of Inspector Gadget, all right, or Dick Tracy, okay? Uh, so, yeah, I've had to cast one of those from a location before, and then uh, you'll hear, you know, the New Age uh, alien community talking about tall whites. Well, I've also had to cast some of those out before. But uh, you don't cast these, these unclean spirits out of people or out of places via exorcism that they're just going to shame you unless they're set there to deceive you. So the nakedness of Egypt here in verse 4 is showing their shame, okay? And then uh, the seat uncovered verifies the shame. So now we see that the nakedness of Isaiah going around for three years uh, wasn't a full nudity. It was to show the shame and, and how destitute that these people who go into captivity to Assyria would be, specifically Egypt, Ethiopia, Philistia, and then of course uh, Assyria also takes down and takes into captivity the house of Israel. Verse 5, and they have been affrighted and ashamed of Cush, their confidence, and of Egypt, their beauty. Who is ashamed of Cush and of Egypt? Well, it started off by talking about the Philistines. This chapter is to the Philistines, but it is mentioning Egypt and Cush or Ethiopia as an example. Okay, so there's no antecedent here that tells us that their shame of Cush and Egypt, that there has changed to something else. The antecedent to there here is going to have to be Ashdod and Philistia. They are the ones. Verse 6, And the inhabitant of this isle hath said in that day, Lo, thus is our trust, whither we have fled for help, to be delivered from the king of Ashur. And how do we escape? 
We. Oui. So where are they going to escape to? They can't go to Egypt and to Ethiopia for help. And by the way, the inhabitant of this isle, uh, isle here, it doesn't mean island like how we interpret island these days. Uh, isle then, it just meant a city or an area that was surrounded by a lot of water, and it often meant a coastal city, such as was the case with Philistia or with the Philistines. That was a coastal area, so then it was referred to as an isle, even though it was not an island. It was just a coastal area. So this concludes our short little study and this little six-verse chapter of Isaiah chapter 20. Have a blessed day.